let's talk about how the signaling model for human capital works. So in these graphs, you see a company has set up a wage structure where they want to pay low ability or low productivity workers $200,000, and they want to pay high productivity workers $300,000. And they'd like to be able to, since you can't always just tell whether someone is high or low productivity before hiring them, <coughs> they'd like to be able to use <clears throat> education as a signal of how product productive a particular job candidate is. And in this case, they've chosen a level of education equal to Y bar. So you can think about that as a four-year degree or, um, or a diploma of some sort. Uh, so, so what they'd like to do is pay anyone with education less than Y bar um, $200,000 and they'd like to pay people with education higher than Y bar, $300,000. Um, and we want this to work as a signal. So they definitely, they don't want to end up paying those high ability or high productivity workers too little, and they don't want to end up paying the low productivity workers too much. And so they need to set um, these wages relative to what it costs these different workers to go to school. So what you can see in these, the difference between the two graphs is that the graph on the left shows the cost of schooling for a low productivity worker. And the graph on the right shows the cost of schooling for a high productivity worker. That's what these cost lines are. And you'll notice that for high, for high productivity workers, the cost of school is lower. Um, for whatever reason. So the idea here is that your productivity, your ability to be productive is somehow related to your ability to do school. And so it costs you less in anxiety or in paying for tutors or extra books, things like that, if you have high productivity or high ability than if you're low productivity or low ability. Um, so in this case, uh, the workers get paid $200,000 if they get less than um, Y bar years of college and $300,000 if they get at least or more than three Y bar years. Um, and since the low productivity workers find it expensive to invest in that amount of college, they're going to choose the lower salary over paying so much to go to school, even though they would get paid a higher salary. Um and the high productivity workers find it so inexpensive to go to college that they'll choose to do that in order to get the higher, um, the higher wage. So how these uh, wages, the 200000 and the 300000 are chosen is actually really important to make sure that the workers will select or, or um, divide themselves into the two groups and the firm can then tell using this signal of schooling, whether the workers are high productivity or low productivity. So how do you choose those, those, that wage structure? Um, well, let's think about if worker, if you know you want to pay those high productivity workers $300,000, um, then you need to think about, okay, then where do we set the wage for the low productivity workers so that low productivity people don't find it beneficial to go ahead and finish college so that we can use college or Y bar years of college as a signal to show us whether people are low productivity or high productivity. So in this case, let's think about paying the, the people with less than Y bar years of college K dollars and then paying everyone else, everyone who has at least Y bar years of college, $300,000. So if you know the cost of earning that college degree for the low productivity workers is $250,000, or and $1, according to the graph before, and for high productivity workers, it's $20,000. So we need to think about what range should K, the amount we pay the, the lower the lower years of college workers fall in in order to use this education as a signal of productivity. 
So you want the low productivity workers not to choose to go to college and the high productivity workers to choose to go to college. And when that happens, we call this an incentive compatible wage structure. So we have created the incentive for workers who are low productivity not to go to college. And we create an incentive for workers who are high productivity to use college, to go to college, so that we can use that college degree or those Y bar years of college as our signal of which type of worker we're looking at um, when we're when we're interviewing or looking through applications. So how do we do that? So for low productivity workers, you want to be sure that they would get they would earn more if they don't go to college than if they do to go to college so that they have the incentive not to go to college and so you want k the amount paid to those workers who don't go to college to be greater than what these low productivity workers would get if they did go to college which is that three hundred thousand dollars that those who get go to college get paid minus the two hundred fifty thousand that it costs them to go to college so you want to be sure that what they earn for not going to college k is greater than what they earn if they go to college which is three hundred thousand minus the cost of college and for high productivity workers you want a similar thing but you want them to have an incentive to go to college and so you want what they earn if they do go to college which is 300,000 minus their cost of college, 20,000, to be greater than what they would earn if they didn't go to college, K, the amount that we pay people who don't go to college. So setting up these, these incentive compatible um, equations, we can see that if we want this to work, if we want to be able to use Y bar years of college as a signal of who is low productivity and who is high productivity, then we have to put that K, the amount that we pay to low productivity workers or the amount that we pay for those with less than Y bar years of college needs to be between $49,999 and $280,000. And in that, if we do that, as long as we set K between those two numbers, then we know that the low productivity workers are going to earn more if they don't go to college. So they will choose not to go to college. And the high productivity workers will earn more if they do go to college. They will choose to go to college. And then as we're looking at applications and resumes, we know that those who went to college are the ones who are high productivity and those who didn't go to college are the ones who are low productivity. And that is the signaling model for human capital.